Okay, welcome. This is a classic uh, conservation law of energy problem, but before we start to tackle this problem, uh, I have a two-part video. Uh, this is the first part you're watching, which we will address the question conceptually. The second part will answer it algebraically. But first, consider this scenario. Uh, imagine a ball, mass m, any mass, falls from some height uh, in three different scenarios, as I have illustrated below, scenario A, B, and C. And your job is to consider if the ball falls vertically in scenario A, just free fall problem, fall straight down. How fast is that ball moving at the bottom of its path? What's its final velocity just before it hits the ground? As opposed to as if that ball were to roll down a steep track some distance, what would its final velocity be? Versus rolling down a much larger track. And if you were to compare the final velocity of this mass in all three cases, how would its final velocity compare? That's actually a really tricky problem to think about. Uh, and to solve it with kinematics is very tricky, but solve it with conservation law of energy is a little simpler, which we're going to get to in our second video. But first consider just what's happening here. Okay, which case is the path the shortest? And which case is the path the longest to the ball? I think that's pretty obvious. Scenario A falls vertically, the shortest path. It's a little longer in scenario B. But in scenario C, it's the longest path. So you could rank the distance the ball travels in all three cases, and you would say, well, the least A and the greatest scenario C. Now ask the question, well, in which scenario will the ball be falling for the greatest amount of time? In which scenario will it be falling for the least amount of time? Well, if it falls this short distance in scenario A, and it accelerates with zero friction due to gravity, the acceleration rate is G. And you could assume that it's going to likely hit the ground very quickly in a short amount of time. Whereas in scenario C, it's going to roll down this ramp much greater distance, and it's going to therefore take a much greater amount of time. And you'd be correct. So you know it's traveling different distances in all three scenarios, and it's traveling for different amounts of time in all three scenarios. So then you could ask the question, well, how does the acceleration vary in all three scenarios? The distance varies, the time varies, and obviously, the greatest acceleration will be the free fall scenario A. It just falls freely due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. And if it falls at a steeper slope, well, it's probably a little less than that. And if it falls at a shallower slope here, this would be the lowest scenario, uh, lowest acceleration in scenario C. So conceptually, you can tell the ball will, have, will travel a different amount of time, it'll accelerate at different rates, and it'll travel different distances in all three cases. But the question you now have, how fast is the ball going at the very bottom of its path just before it hits the ground? Assuming it always starts at the top with an initial velocity zero in all three cases of the same starting height above the ground. Okay, think about that, try to solve it, and then begin the second video. We will see you soon. 